Welcome to your new layer. Let's take a look at some of the included features. Starting out, all layers live within a workspace. A workspace is a way that we can invite members to our workspace so we can all work on the same layers or projects together. Once we click on a layer, we're greeted by the overview page. As you see, we have a readme in front of us. This is something we can change so we can give users information about how to use our tool. You also see information about when our deployments were. We have tagging features so you can tag this layer with different tags so you can easily find it within your workspace. Next, we have a endpoints section. These endpoints will be how we access our servers and our microservices using these two endpoints. As you see, there are two separate ones. We have a dev one and a prod one. This just means that once we deploy our application, we will have a production endpoint that we can visit. Our dev one remains there for testing. Finally, you see that we have logs. These logs are there to help us troubleshoot and find any issues that are going on in our layers and help correct any mistakes in our code. This overview page is very useful for seeing a quick snapshot of everything that's going on in our layer. We can dive in more into our layer by clicking on this open develop view in the top right, and it's also available on the left bar as the second option. Once we click this, you see that we're now inside of a develop view, and this gives us access to the terminal. This terminal operates just the same way that a local terminal would work. So any dependencies that we might need to install, we would install them here. We do that the same way, so we might say something like pip install some package. You see here that we also have access to our triggers panel here. To create a trigger in Wayscript, you would click this plus button. Right now, you would have the option between three different triggers, a cron one, which is just a time-based automation that we can use to automatically execute code in our layer. The deploy trigger is very useful for setting up servers. So if we had some type of server, we would use the deploy trigger and we would choose our command to run and the port that we want to set it at. The information that we put in these blanks depends on the type of server we're setting up. So be sure to check out our documentation, which has a walkthrough on all types of different servers. Our final trigger for now is the HTTP trigger. This gives you access to an endpoint where when the user hits an endpoint, we can do some command. This is great for setting up things such as webhooks. Now that we've talked about each of these, our interface is customizable. So you can drag around these components and you can also choose which ones display for you. To do that, you would access the bottom selection bar. Awesome. So we've covered the default interface. Now let's talk about the selection bar on the left. So our first icon, the overview page, we've already discussed it very briefly. Next, we have the develop view. This is the view we're currently in. The deploy interface. So anytime that we want to deploy our application, we would go to this menu here and choose to deploy it. What this does is deploys our application and sets up a production endpoint if we're using a server or sets up the cron job to automatically execute our code. It's important to note that some features don't work in the development environment. That's because we don't want your cron triggers to be firing something that you don't want. So anything that you want to execute using the cron trigger, be sure to deploy it from this menu. Don't worry if something goes wrong in your production environment. We have logs set up so you can view both a development and production log using this interface here. This is the force selection on the left and we get all those logs in one place from here. Like I said, we can sort using the filters on the left. Since a Wayscript layer can be thought of as a full environment, we also have access to using environment variables and secrets within our layer. And we can select those by going to the next icon on the left-hand bar. From here, we can select new secret and create a new secret. This means that you can store credentials safely in your Wayscript layer and you can access them programmatically from your code. Our next icon is the alerts icon. Alerts are very helpful if we have a business critical task and we want to be notified whenever our code doesn't execute successfully. We can create alerts at varying different cadences, so we can get an alert as soon as our code doesn't work. This is great to notify us if we need to make any changes or go and view our logs to see what changes need to be made. Our next menu is the endpoints menu. The endpoints menu features the two endpoints that we've already seen. It also houses an important feature that we might want on those endpoints, and that is to make them publicly accessible. By default, all endpoints inside of a layer are private, and that means that only people in your workspace can view them. If you make them publicly accessible, that means others outside of your workspace can hit your endpoints and get information back or send requests to them. With all that said, that's the bare bones of how we can start using the Wayscript layer. It's a very powerful tool, and undoubtedly, you can create some awesome things with it, and I'm excited to see what you build. If you need any help whatsoever, please feel free to join our Discord server and ask us questions. 
Also, we feature a bunch of different tutorials on different tools that you can build using Wayscript layers on our YouTube channel. So if you have any ideas or questions, feel free to pop over there and drop us a comment. Until next time.